What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, got a pretty big unboxing here. I've got four raw books. Uh, I think one that is pretty good to be on the lookout for right now, as well as another that it's probably worthwhile to wait a little bit. But what I'm also going to do is, like I did in one of my prior videos, after I've opened these up, I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to do the grading of these books. So stay tuned. <music> So before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So like I said, I've got some pretty expensive raw books here, and so uh, I'm excited and nervous to open these because condition really matters when you're talking about raw books like this. And like I mentioned, there's one that I think is actually probably pretty good to be on the lookout for right now. It's not a cheap book, but good book to add if you can. Another one that, even though I picked it up, probably could wait <laughs> to, to get this book. It'll probably come down some, uh, but I saw, I felt like it was a, a pretty good price, so I decided to go for it. But then I'm also gonna do the, I'm gonna flip the camera like I did in one of my other videos, and I'll go through the grading on them because grading is gonna be really important with these. But let's start with this box here. Uh, like I said, there are two books that are in here, and, because well, because there's two books in each box. Uh, this one is two Marvel Silver Age keys. One is a really big Silver Age key. Uh, it's in lower condition, uh, worse condition. Uh, the other one is, I don't know, it's not a small key, uh, but it's not like a, a super major character or anything like that. So, so we had the box there, and then inside that we've got another box. All right, inside of there. Got the books that are then also in bubble wrap. So, you know, it, it's always nice to see everything packaged really well, uh, especially when you've got books that are pretty pricey like this. All right, so the first book here, this is one that, yeah, it's expensive, but if you're looking for these types of books, if you've been trying to put together this type of run, it's becoming a time that I think it's pretty good to be looking for these. And it's not necessarily just this book, but similar books to this one. And this is Amazing Spider-Man number two. And this is the first appearance of the Vulture and the third appearance of Spider-Man. Just awesome book. Um, I have a restored copy of this one that has some color touch on it that I've been planning on sending in to have the, the color touch removed. Uh, but this one, this is a really, really nice presenting copy, but it has some very serious spine splitting. It's still attached. I don't know, you'll be able to see it when I do the grading video. You can kind of see it there. It has very serious spine splitting. You can see kind of like some missing pieces there too along the spine. Like I said, it is still attached at both staples, so that's a plus, but a lot of spine splitting, which, man, makes me nervous with how CGC has been treating books that have fragile spines. Um, I, with this one, I might just send this one straight in. I, I, I want to get it graded, but I might just send it straight in and not even bother with uh, with pressing because I'm just so afraid of, of this book handling any type of pressing. Um, but it, because a press with this one probably isn't going to improve it all that much because it's already going to be a lower grade because of this splitting. Um, but it is a, a really nice presenting copy. So that's one. I, these these Spider-Man villain keys, they have been they've been dropping since all the, the hype and spikes around uh, the No Way Home movie. And so if you're trying to get these, like these books don't stay down for long. I mean, I don't think there's a much better solid books to invest in than Silver Age Amazing Spider-Man villains. And so um, it's one of the rare examples where you've got villains that are actually good, <laughs> you know, solid investments, um, but Spider-Man is one of them. And when you see prices coming down, if you see those red down arrows, uh, in GPA, that's when you, you really want to be looking. Now, the other one here is Fantastic Four number 46. Now, this is one that I think I would be a little more cautious about right now, uh, just because we saw Black Bolt in uh, the Doctor Strange movie, but I think that was probably just kind of some fan service. I don't think we're, I think it's unlikely we're going to, to get that character more in the future. It's possible they could go that route. Um, but I, it just felt like it was probably fan service to me. But um, this is a very nice presenting copy. Uh, the main issues it has are, 
are really along the bottom here. It has a really strong dust shadow and some tanning and then a small amount of staining there and a little bit of chipping along the bottom. Um, but a, a very clean book otherwise. Spine is, is really, really nice on this one. Um, really nice presenting copy, but uh, that's going to be really the limiter on it. So this is a this is a tough one to grade to determine when you have a book that presents as nicely as this, then has this very specific type of flaw on the bottom. How much is that going to to drag that grade down? And uh, so that one I think will be interesting to talk about. All right, so those were the first two. Now, this box, this is the one that I am, I am really nervous <laughs> about this one. Uh, because this one, it's, again, it's not the, the most expensive raw I've ever bought. Most expensive raw I've ever bought was definitely the uh, Fantastic Four number one. Um, the, the, it was restored, but still, uh, that was the most expensive raw. Second most expensive was that Crime Suspense Stories 22. I think this is the third. Uh, so I think this is number three on the cost of the raws. And so I'm nervous about it. You know, when you're when you're buying a raw book like that, um, you you really need it to grade out uh, where you think it's going to. Um, and uh, I'm going to be very careful getting this out of here. Okay. So there are two books in here. One of them is a Golden Age book. One of them is a Silver Age book. Golden Age book is really cool. And this one, if you look at GPA, it hasn't even had a sale in the last year. These, uh, these books, they just, they don't come up very often. And so I was pretty happy to be able to pick this one up. It's a, it's a pretty nice presenting copy. It's got some dirt and stuff, but um, this is Detective Comics number 118. Uh, which is this just a really cool Joker cover where he's got, you know, the cards on the cover and everything. And you can see there's some, you know, there's like some dirt and that kind of thing along the spine. A little bit of a, uh, you know, like a dust shadow here. Um, but overall, yellows on this one, colors, they really pop. You know, it's a, it's a pretty solid looking book. And so this one, will, this will be a fun one to grade, you know, to take a look at. Uh, I don't know how many pages this one is, so I might need to check that for doing the page count. It's like I've said before, Golden Age is a little weird with pages. You don't, it's not always the eight to centerfold and then, you know, eight more. So checking that Grand Comics database is, is very helpful with that. All right, now this is the other one. This is the one that was very, very expensive. Um, so I'm going to take a close look at this one and we'll see. What I, what I think about the, the possible grade on it. But this is Hulk number six. And this is a, uh, or supposed to be a high grade copy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I bought it on Instagram and so that's always, it's always tough. You know, you can't really tell. And so I need to evaluate this book in person. You know, you can tell it's got a little bit of spine wear kind of thing, a little bit of wear on the top, that's not part of the book. That's a, um, it's like a scratch on the mylar, but a little wear on the top, but we'll definitely take a, a close look at this one. Um, and uh, cause this is a book that when you start getting up into the higher grades, it jumps very, very quickly in price. And if you've watched some of my other unboxing videos, I picked up some high grade Hulks recently. I've had a, I got a 8.0 of issue five and I got a, 6.5 of issue two, and I am hoping that this one can also be an 8.0. Um, if I get a 7.5, I'm okay. It's basically like a break-even type situation. Uh, if it's below a 7.5, it's a lose money situation. <laughs> if it's above a 7.5, then it's then it's a you know it's a real nice uh, win situation. So we'll see how this one turns out. So those are the four books. Um, I'm gonna flip that camera around now, and we'll walk through the grading of these books. Okay, so we're gonna start with Amazing Spider-Man number two. You can see from from this angle, you know, this is a book that will look really nice when it's in a in a slab or just in the in the bag. It is a very nice presenting copy from the front. You don't see any big creases. You know, there's a little chip, and you see these little chips along the spine here, but nothing is interrupting the art. And you've got really bright colors. Sometimes this uh, this red up here will get faded or kind of turn an orange. And this has the, the nice bright reds. So let's take a close look at this one though. So this one, 
like I said, what the first thing I like to do when I'm grading a book is I like to look for big limiting flaws, flaws that are going to keep you from getting above a certain grade. And I can see there's a large tear right here that's maybe two inches across. And then we've got along the spine, I want to be careful here because it is fragile. Uh, we've got this, this piece that's missing here that's maybe inch and a half to two inches, then another inch here, another half inch here, and then, uh, I don't know if it's split up at the top. Yeah, and you've got some splitting up at the top here as well. So total splitting on the spine is maybe four inches, five inches, something like that. It's, it's pretty significant spine splitting. And then let's look at the back. The back is, is fine. It's just got, you can see that strong tanning around the edges. That's that, this, you know, darker coloring around the edges. But you can also see that it's attached at both staples. Now it is only attached here. You can see that big split. See that large split there? I mean, this is a, this is a fragile book, um, but it is at least attached at both staples right now. The question is, after I send it in for grading, Will it still be attached to both staples? And uh, I don't know. I don't know if it will or not. Um, so with a book like this, one thing that's really helpful is if you have references. And so I have had an extremely nice presenting Fantastic Four number three that had major spine splits, especially after CGC got their hands on it. It got a little worse after CGC was going through it. And I think it was like six total inches of spine splits. This has probably at least that. And that book came back a 2.5. Um, this one presents really well, just like that one. And I think the spine splitting is worse than that copy. Now this one is attached at both staples. I believe that one was detached at one of them. Um, so that may help it a little bit, but that's why I don't think this can get above a 2.5 because of that, with that I got with that other book. But it's so nice and still being attached, I think it can get a 2. I think a 2.0 is a pretty safe grade for this book. They may punish me and I end up with something like a 1.8 because of all the, the spine splitting, but as long as it remains attached, I don't think I'll get down into the ones. I think a 2.0 is where it'll be. If I get lucky, maybe I get a 2.5. Um, I'm not actually going to, in the other video, I did like flip throughs of everything. I'm not gonna do that with this one because it's, so, uh, it's so fragile, but just so you can see, here's the interior. Um, and it's got a lot of tanning. And then there's the vulture on that front page. Old man vulture. <laughs> um, and then uh, I'm gonna do a flip through and a page count on my own, but uh, I'll, I'll do that outside of this video. All right, now the second book we're gonna go over here is Fantastic Four, number 46. You can see again, this is a very clean copy of this book. The main flaws, like I talked about earlier, are focused on this bottom edge here. Um, but let's walk through this book here. So you can see, I don't have to be quite as careful handling this one as that Amazing Spider-Man 2 because it was just, you know, just the spine just crumbling on that one. Um, so you see a very glossy book. It's really nice presenting copy. If we go up along the, the spine here, you know, we've got, well, we'll, we'll start at the spine. So got a little wear up at this top edge. Um, but I think we can probably almost even count flaws here. So I'd say maybe a couple here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm calling this a few. Six, seven, eight, maybe nine, 10, 11. All right, and we'll talk about the bottom at the end. We'll go along the top edge here. Got a little tiny crease up here, maybe 12, 13, 14, maybe 15, 16, 17. This edge is pretty nice. Got a little tear here. And then a little blunting down in this corner. So I'm at maybe about 20 flaws now. Um, and then we go to the, the bottom edge. And so this bottom edge, 
dust shadows really in this type of grade aren't really going to hurt the book. Even, I mean, you can have dust shadows in high nine, in mid nines. You, even, you can even have dust shadows in Golden Age books in high nines, nine eights. Um, but this one's a little dark, so it might hurt it a little. Um, and you've got these tiny stains here. Um, they don't add up to much total. Um, it's a pretty small amount of staining. You could probably still have the eights with this amount of staining. Um, you've got a little bit of chipping right there on the bottom. It's not actually off. The paper is still there, but the cover is chipped. Then let's flip this one over. In the back, back looks really clean. It's just, it's got this dust shadow on the side and on the bottom a little bit. Staples are all attached. No major flaws on the back. The back is an extremely clean copy. Um, and if we look on the interior, this is where you can, you can really see that tanning. You know, it's pretty strong tanning there around the edges. And you can see that little bit of staining on the bottom. And then we've got black bolt there. And I'm gonna do a quick flip through and you can see the interior. All right, so that was the flip through. Then here's the back cover. You can see that tanning again there. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it is, it's a really glossy, nice presenting copy. <sighs> this one's a little tough, like I said. So, total flaws, if you didn't have this, I'd probably have it at like an eight. Um, with that tanning down on the bottom, this is a situation where it might not actually move the grade. Um, it might be something where in that grade, it's generally acceptable to have that and it won't adjust it down any, um, especially with the overall nice condition of this book. But I think a 7.5 is very possible with this one. Um, I would really like higher than that, but I, I don't see it with, with this going on down here. It's a little stronger um, than what I had been expecting with this book. Um, so I think it's probably, I think it's probably in the sevens. Um, would they get, give me a seven? Ugh, that would be, that would be brutal because it's such a beautiful copy, but I could see it happening. Um, like I've had a, a House of Secrets 92 that has really strong tanning, but was just absolutely beautiful. Um, and they gave it a seven. Um, it had a couple, it did have a couple light creases, uh, but very small. Um, so I'd like to use other books I've had as reference. And so I, I don't think this one can get into the eights. They might be a little more forgiving because it's Silver Age. Um, but I think seven, five is probably the max that this book is going to get. All right. So the next book we're going to do here is the Detective Comics number 118. I'm going to save the Hulk to the end. So I did check the Grand Comics database uh, for the page count. It has 52 pages. That is including the, uh, when they give their page counts, that includes the front and back cover, which means it should be 48 interior pages, which is 12 to center, and then 12 more pages to the back. So let's take a look at this one, because this, I mean, this, this is a pretty solid looking book. It has some staining there, but uh, that's what I like to do quickly is, I take a, a quick assessment of the book to see what might be like a limiting factor on this one that's gonna really hold it back. You know, on the front cover, I mean, like for a Golden Age book, I think this is 1946, let me check. Yep, 1946. So Golden Age book, this is, I mean, look at the spine. This spine is incredible. There's almost nothing wrong with it. I mean, you've got like a couple of little spine ticks, but this is a really solid copy of this book. Um, so, and, and you can even, and so for Golden Age, you can look at that. You can even see the, re the reflective difference on the cover. It's still got some of that, uh, kind of like that shine to the cover, the gloss to the cover, which is really cool. So this one, let's we'll just start looking at it. So we've got, I mean, it's, it's a little dirty and you can't clean this uh, because this is going to be, um, you know, it's a yellow cover. You can't really do, if you do a racing, you, you lift some color, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
nothing really jumps out in this book. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with this book. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so we're just going along the spine here and there's some dirt, like I said, but there aren't any real major flaws. You've got a few little things here and there, you know, but just there, and there's this dust shadow here, but dust shadows are very acceptable in the golden age. Um, there are a couple light creases here. Uh, let's see if I can get, they're easier to see on the interior cover of the cover. So you can see those, you got a couple light creases down in the corner there. A total creasing of maybe an inch and a half, something like that. Um, there's a tiny tear on the top, so you can see a tiny tear up there. Um, but really, I mean, this, I'd say like staining is the only thing that's really jumping out on this book. You know, there's, there's like a little stain right here. Um, on the back, you have these little stains here, but they really aren't that bad. Um, back cover again, you know, I love these Baby Ruth ads that they have, but that's a cool back cover. I've never seen this one before with this parrot. Um, but yeah, back cover too, like staples are, are firm. And this is what I've talked about in some other videos. You've got offset staples on the back here, and you often get really nice copies of books when you have offset staples on the back, because when somebody's flipping it, they aren't putting stress on the staples, which is normally the weak point. And then yeah, check out that opening splash page. That is, that is a nice opening splash page. That's awesome. And so let's look at the interior. There's, I mean, there's a little tanning. I don't remember what they assigned the grade on this was, but I feel like I didn't think it was this nice. I'm, I mean, yeah, there's like little bits of creasing and stuff, some small stuff there, but wow. This is a, this is a nice golden age book. I got it. It's like I'm almost I'm almost like speechless a little bit <laughs> with this one. Uh, so let's let's do I'll do the page count and I'll do this one maybe a little slower so you can see some of that interior art. Uh, now remember it's Detective Comics. It's not all Batman on the inside, so maybe I'll go a little faster for the non-Batman stuff. But there's that awesome splash page, and then I'll I'll flip through. All right, so that's the whole book. You saw it was just the first story that's Batman, and then you have things like Slam Bradley that are that are other stories because this is Detective Comics. It's not all Batman at this point, um, but like yeah, in general, I mean, it's it is a really nice presenting copy of this book. Actually, I feel like I'm going to struggle a little bit on on grading with this one. Um, you know, it's got some stains, and it's got you know enough stains that aren't going to hurt it that bad though. You know, with that, like, you, you could still get in, like, the sevens with stains like that. But you have some general just kind of, like, dirtiness to the cover. But, man, I think, I think this book could realistically get in the sixes. Um, I think a 665 could really happen with this book, which I'm pretty sure that is, I mean, yeah, you've got, like, it's like a little bit of staining, but. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you've got these little creases here, but that's not gonna it's not gonna kill you on the grade. Yeah, so I mean for me right now, I think I think this book could get in the sixes. I think a six six five. It's very possible with this book. This is an extremely clean copy. It just has, you know, a little bit of staining, a little bit of dirt on the cover. Definitely gonna get this one pressed just to make it look its best. Um, maybe some of the whites can get cleaned up a little bit with some cleaning, but wow, this is a, this is a beautiful copy of this book. I'm very, very happy with this one. All right. So now we are down to the last book. This is Incredible Hulk number six. This is the final issue of that initial Hulk run before it returned many years later with Hulk 102. All right. So, uh, some people have said, you know, I don't talk about what I pay for the books on, very much in this one. This book was very expensive. 
this book costs three thousand dollars raw so just kind of give an idea and so it's one of those things where with that it does it at a seven five it's basically especially after grading i'm probably losing a little uh if it gets an eight um i'm, I'm doing pretty well so it's a book that jumps in price significantly between seven five and eight so it's a this is a you know is a risky-ish purchase it's going to have a lot of value regardless um because it it clearly is a high grade copy. It's just the question is, does it get to that certain high grade? So this is one where I'm gonna take a look at the back. I don't see anything jump out on the back. Back is incredible. In the front, let's just start counting some flaws. So the top here, there's a tiny little tear at the top. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna work our way down the spine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, maybe 14, 15, 16, 17 flaws there. And then along the top, we've got this kind of like little bit of light creasing. And some of that can be improved with pressing. Uh, you know, you can have it, it flattened out. You can't get rid of any of that color break though. Um, so we'll see how, how that turns out. And we've got a tiny little crease in the corner. So maybe that's what, 18. Maybe a little nick there, 19. And then we've got a little reader, like thumb crease here. A little bluntness on the corner. And then going along the bottom. The bottom looks fine. So we've got the back cover. There's no additional flaws on the back. Any spine ticks, they're just carry over from the front. I don't see anything that jumps out. There's maybe like a light bend here but nothing that couldn't be handled with, with pressing. Um, same thing up at the top there. It's tough to see. I don't know if it really comes out in the light. So, yeah, you can see it there, a little bend, but nothing that I'm worried about. So I'm gonna do, check the interior. Now this is one thing from when, when they showed the book, I could see no tanning, just no tanning on this. Um, probably off white to white or white pages. It's nice pages, no tanning, and uh, we'll do the quick flip through here. Okay, so all the pages are there. I don't see any stains or anything like that. Um, Maybe there's a little crease right here. So do I think this can get an eight? I don't know. I'm sitting more, I'm sitting more at a seven five, um, just with the spine wear, this little uh, finger bend here, and you know, what I see at the top. When I've had similar books, um, now, the other one that I'm comparing to that's relatively similar was an Avengers 57, uh, the first Vision, and that one was really clean, actually had a cleaner spine but had a little bit of staining up in the corner, uh, kind of like up here. It was really mild, so it's always tough because it's tough to do an exact comparison, but that one also had a couple tiny little creases that broke color at the top. Nick got a 7.5. Uh, do I think this could maybe get an eight? Maybe. Uh, I think it, it might have a shot at an eight. I think a seven five is more likely, um, which, yeah, it'll be disappointing, you know, <laughs> if, I, if I get the seven five. Um, it'd be really disappointing if I got lower than a seven five, but um, disappointing if I got a seven five. Eight would be incredible. I do think this one has a pretty decent shot at some, some nice page quality. The fact that it has just like no tanning is a big plus. Uh, this is definitely a book that I'm getting pressed 
first. It doesn't really need much with respect to cleaning. Um, that's not really a concern, but I want to make sure that that top edge is as perfect as possible when it goes into grating. I want to make sure any dimpling or any light bends are all taken care of because you have really big value differences on this book with very, with like half grade changes. Um, so right now I have it at a 7.5. Hoping, yeah, yeah, I don't like to hope for grades. I, I usually find that I'm, I'm pretty accurate <laughs> in my grading, but sometimes I get a half grade bump, you know, uh, so hoping maybe I can get that half grade bump and it gets, it gets up to an eight because it is a, a really clean looking book. Um, but I just, I think that accumulation of flaws is gonna is gonna get it to a 7.5 um, but we'll see I'm definitely sending this one in so we'll see how that turns out all right so back from the the grading on these so and these four books I, I have to say you know definitely this one I'm I'm real happy with that this is this looks nicer than I was expecting this book to be uh, so that was a nice positive surprise this one uh, came back, you know, to me, it's, it's what I would expected. I'd say I would be lying if I, if I said I wasn't a little disappointed with the, with the other two, this one being what I think is probably going to be a seven, five, uh, something like that could even get a seven, uh, is a little disappointing to me. Um, and then this one, I mean, I'm really hoping for that eight, but I just, I don't know if I see it. Um, I'll, I think, I think it's a really solid seven, five. Um, I just I don't know if it's gonna if it can get up into that eight uh, But still a, a beautiful copy of this book, but I hope you enjoyed this video Saw some cool books, you know, maybe helped with grading a little bit If you did please hit that like button hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this I've got more videos over here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here if you'd like to subscribe to the channel I'd really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video